we are working on solving logarithmic equations. We've seen that we solve most of them just by converting them using the exponential property. Let me look at another example here, and I want to talk about what we can do with this. So we have log base 2 of 3x minus 4 is equivalent to log base 2 of x plus 2. Well, this one I can do the exact same way that I've done them before. I notice they're the same thing, so let me put them on the same side of the equation. That gives me log base 2 of 3x minus 4 minus log base 2 of x plus 2. Now I can convert that subtraction into a division within a single log. And then that gives me, converting it into my exponential form, 2 to the 0 power, or 1, is equal to 3x minus 4 over x plus 2. Do my magic trick to get rid of my fraction by multiplying both sides times x plus 2. And that gives me x plus 2 is equal to 3x minus 4. Do this by moving my x to the same side and my constants to the opposite side. And that gives me 2x is equal to 6. And if I were to divide by 2, that gives me the solution of x is equal to 3. So this one is nothing new. Nothing different than what we've done in the past few examples. But let me show you maybe a simpler way that we could go about this one. And that is by using the equivalence property of logarithmic equations. So we've seen the equivalence property of exponential. It says if I can make the bases the same, then I basically just drop them and my exponents are equal to each other. Well, I can do that the same thing with logs. If I can make my logs with the same basis, then I basically can drop my logs and I can solve the equation x equals y. Now we can do this on the last example that we've seen because we have in fact an equivalent statement with log base 2 on both sides. But we would not have been able to do that with our examples in the previous video because if I look at these, I wouldn't have been able to do it here because I have this extra value involved. I wouldn't have been able to do it here, at least in the first step, because I have multiple logs on the same side. I wouldn't have been able to do it here because I only have logs on one side of the equation. So you can see that this only happens in very special cases when we are, in fact, in this format. So I did it here by using the properties that I knew. Let's do it again by using my equivalence formula. Well, this one is going to be very straightforward. I can basically drop my log base 2, and that gives me the equation of 3x minus 4 is equal to x plus 2, which is the exact same thing that we had here. So, of course, we're going to get the same answer. But notice how many steps that I got to cut out just by resembling just by noticing that I have logs of the same bases equal to each other. So if you can skip all those extra steps, then I encourage you to do so. If you cannot, then yes, you must just follow the properties of logs. All right, so at this time we really talked about how to solve every single exponential equation that we might see and every single logarithmic equation that we might see. But there is a note that there might be certain instances where we cannot solve them by using the properties that we already know by hand. And so I have a couple of examples here. So my first one is an exponential equation because I see that I have an x in the exponent. But notice this also resembles some sort of polynomial equation because I have an x that's not in an exponent. So I'm combining two different types of equations here. So I will not be able to solve this by polynomial methods, and I will not be able to solve this by exponential methods. So no matter what algebraic methods we try here, it's just impossible to solve. So the only way to actually solve equations like this is by using that graphing device that we've talked about before. We are going to let this be one side of the equation. We're going to let this be the other side of the equation. And then we're going to see where they intersect. 
Um, let me do this by using my Desmos app. I think it's a little bit more user friendly. So you see here, I have the left-hand side of my equation plugged in, e to the x plus 2x minus 7. If I plug in the right-hand side of my equation, which is y equals 0, it might not show up on your calculator as much as you expect it to be, because y equals 0 is the exact same thing as the x-axis. If you have color-coded like mine is here, then it's a little easier to see. If we want to see where these intersect, we just basically need to pinpoint the intersection point. So that's happening right here. And so my solution to that is this guy right here, 1.424. And so, and so by using my graphing device, my answer is x is approximately 1.424. All right, with my second equation, I have the same issue. I have a logarithmic function because my x is in the log, and then I also have an x that is outside of the log, so I'm combining two different types of equations here. So I will not be able to solve this algebraically. So the easiest way to solve this is by using And so on the left-hand side, I plug in 4 natural log of x minus 3x, so I have both versions of my equations plugged in, 4 natural log of x minus 3x, and y equals negative 8. You might be wondering what's happening here because I'm not seeing any points of intersection. Well, notice if I'm graphing y equals negative 8, that's a horizontal line at negative 8. Well, I don't see that, so let me just adjust my graph. So I do. I'm zooming up or shifting this up, and so now I do see this. There's actually two points of intersection here. One at this value right here, which is 0.152, and then one at this value right here, which is 4.742. And so now I have this two solutions to this equation. And so here are my answers to this equation by using my graphing device. All right, I have one more video here, and that's basically to tie up loose ends. I started this section with a word problem that I didn't answer, and so now I'm going to go back and answer that question that I just left wide open.